What's up Samurai? We are back again for another Velorin Beginner's Guide and more particularly today we're going to be talking about weapon crafting. Not crafting as a whole because I've kind of already covered that in bulk in my uh, Beginner's Guide, but for the most part weapon crafting and armor crafting is what we're going to be talking about today because these are both going to end up having some slight factors that are at play. More particularly weapons themselves will change their stats depending on the resources that you use for crafting that gear armor is a little bit more simplistic and to the point now if we end up going into the weapons you're going to notice that there is a modular weapon right so what this is going to take is a primary weapon component and a secondary weapon component so how do you end up getting those well if we end up going to staff shaft you can see right here that's one of the pieces uh, and then there's going to end up being uh, the other resource which is going to be the pyro core now at any point you can end up hovering over these to see uh, what the resource uh, stats are going to end up being because all of the stats that you see on these is going to end up having a part to play in the weapon itself now again i'm just using a fire staff as an example but it would be the same for any of the other uh, weapons in the game so if we go to the staff shaft this is where things get a little bit more complicated because you will need to put a certain type of wood into this category now the rarity of the wood is going to determine the quality of the gear so legendary wood in particular is dropped from five star dungeon bosses uh, with other pieces of wood being from uh, lower tiered bosses or even just found out in the wild right and then on this side of things there's going to be the animal material now the animal material is a little bit harder to wrestle with because the game is not really going to end up telling you what animal material is going to benefit you. So I'll put a little chart here that's from the wiki uh, that kind of shows you an idea of basically taking the right animal part for the right situation. So in most cases, like for, for me, for example, I would need to end up crafting with a long tusk because the long tusk is going to have the highest crit chance value and hopefully this information remains relevant over time because the devs keep changing all these numbers and stuff and it, you know the wiki might be out of date who knows but my point being is that i would basically put the frostwood here and then the long uh horns here and that would end up giving me this and so you can already see what the stats are going to end up being now that's just the staff shaft which still requires the pyrocore which the pyrocore would end up adding a slight minor bit of stats on top of that now i'm not going to craft this for today's video just because what i'm planning on doing at the moment is i'm waiting to get the higher tier of wood from five star dungeons because i would rather just skip right past a purple staff and go straight into a legendary melee weapons are a little bit different they're going to end up taking an ore instead of a wood uh, and then kind of similar like animal parts, whether it be like elegant crests or uh, predator claws and stuff like that. But the trick is that with the weapons, they can end up being two handed or one handed. So again, I'm going to end up showing an image on the wiki uh, and, you know, I'll put a link in the description of where you can end up going to the wiki. But basically, like you can see this section right here shows that, OK, in order to end up making this uh, in order to make this cleaver, it takes a sword, uh, a short or medium hilt with, uh, you know, an axe head versus the exact same thing. Like if you make an axe head and then you have a long hilt, it's going to turn into a battle axe, which is a two handed weapon, just as an example. So you're going to have to kind of scroll through all of these. Uh, each of the different animal parts is going to have their benefits as well as their negatives. There are also going to end up being rare legendaries or relics, and these are going to end up being super rare pieces of gear that can only be dropped by dungeon bosses that will essentially end up being uniquely named. So it's not just going to say fire staff. It'll be like the staff of God or something. I, I don't know what their names are going to be. It's probably like Shrek staff, right? His washing pole or something. And that is going to end up essentially being how the weapons work. Now, armor is a lot more simple, but you do have to kind of go into things understanding where you're going to build your character. So first and foremost, on the left side, you can kind of see the rarity of the gear is representative of the color type. So green, uh, you know, other silver gear going up and up and so on and so forth until we end up getting into purple and then finally the legendaries. Now, you're going to notice that there's a whole bunch of different 
pieces of gear that you can end up getting, right? So the dragon scale in particular is the one that we'll talk about for today's purposes, but basically this would end up being the gear that you would have for higher crit damage, which is why I in particular would want to have a weapon that has higher crit chance value so that my crit damage could end up triggering. But then Orchilium uh, or, or Calium or whatever is going to end up being the resource or, or the armor that'll give you way more defense as well as stun resistance. So this is more particularly used by your melee classes. Um, then there's going to be Sun Silk, most of all for your mages because of the energy uh, and, you know, so on and so forth. There's all sorts of different uh, pieces of armor that you can craft. I don't know if there's relics of armor. I know that there is unique armor that you can't craft that you can only get as a drop, but for the most part, I think all of the best armor in the game uh, is either crafted through this means or just gotten as rare drops. Now, to briefly touch upon these different late game armors, because I don't wanna go into too much detail about everything, otherwise we'll be here all day. Let's just take a look at the uh, dragon scale cape, for example. So dragon scales are actually a hide uh, element. So it basically counts as like a it's like skin rather than just being like animal skin rather than being like a dragon scale. So for whatever dumb reason, the Minotaur boss actually drops the dragon scales. Uh, blood steel is found deep in the mines. Anytime you end up seeing caves on the map, you'll be able to go into those caves. And so long as they're not glitched, they're really, really deep. And rigid leather is of course off of certain enemies. And so are the scales. The purple armor and blue armor and so on and so forth, like primal gauntlets, for example, as you can see, this is the crit power set. So it's basically the same as dragon scale, but just with less stat value. So just keep that in mind as you go through all of these and just kind of look through them. Uh, there is going to end up being rings and necklaces though, and those get a little bit more complicated because basically almost all of the armor and even the weapons in the game uh, will end up having certain strengths and certain weaknesses. So in this case, you'll see you get armor and max energy, but your energy reward goes down a little bit. An energy reward is when you tag an enemy with your base attack, how much energy do you end up getting? So you might be able to do a burst of damage right away, but regenerating that energy is gonna be a slow uh, process, right? So because we are talking about gear in this video, I did think that it made most sense for us to talk about repairing gear as well as salvaging gear. So repairing gear is actually really, really important. Basically your items will have infinite durability but every time you die, the durability will go down by one. Everything's gonna have eight durability by default. I don't think there's anything that has higher du durability than that. Uh, but as it starts breaking, it's going to have depreciating returns. So you're basically going to have much weaker armor, much weaker weapon, so on and so forth. Uh, usually if you repair it, while it's only like one or two durability down, for the most part, it's gonna be free and super duper cheap. But then later on, as it breaks more and more and more, it's gonna cost Velarite fragments and even raw Velarite itself. Now, Velarite is going to be a resource that you can get off of merchants, same with the fragments, but you can always break down the raw Velarite into, uh, the, uh, into the fragments. So now I'm actually over at a salvaging bench or dismantling table, whatever you wanna call it. You'll see these in towns and stuff like that. Uh, basically, you're gonna end up interacting with it and then any piece of gear that you found in the world, you should be able to dismantle. You can't dismantle everything, but basically I would double click this and you would see that it's going to end up giving me bamboo because this is going to end up being a white tier of gear uh, and on top of that it's also going to end up being a scepter which ends up taking wood in order to craft so the point being is that if you ended up having like say uh, a yellow legendary axe or something it would end up dismantling into orchilium and you can use this very effectively to get that last resource that you might require in order to craft the piece of gear that you actually want so you could go into a dungeon for example and maybe the boss drops a good piece of gear, but it's not for your class. It's not the piece of gear that you want. You can always end up d going and dismantling it just to get the raw resource to craft the gear that you actually want. Or you could honestly just trade it with another player because that's usually more valuable. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for watching. Smash like stuff for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel. Sign on and stay epic, everybody.